Hi again, welcome to my channel. So today's video is another best and worst. I have been doing a ton of these recently because I know that a lot of you really enjoy watching them and find them helpful and they are some of my favorite to make because of that reason. And today's is one that I was excited to put together because I love foundations. So this past year, there have been a bunch of different launches in drugstore foundations as there is every year. And I thought now would be a good time to compile all of the newest foundations and do my overall review of each one, give you an idea of what I think are some of the best ones and some of my less favorite options. Um, I do feel like this year some really awesome foundations came out at the drugstore that I find myself reaching for even more than some of my high-end foundations and I think that says a lot. As a reference for this video, I have normal to combination skin. Right now in the summer months, it is definitely combination, especially in the Florida humidity. So I do get shiny in my T-zone. So I feel like this is a really good time to test foundations and see how they stand up to more extreme conditions because I think if they can wear well in the really hot, humid months, then they are most likely going to wear well the rest of the year. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. As I typically do with these videos, I'm going to start with my least favorite and then end with my favorite foundations. Starting with my least favorite of the group, it would be the Revlon Photo Ready Airbrush Effect uh, Makeup. This one was supposed to be a reformulation of the foundation that came out several years ago and I didn't really like the original, and I have to say I don't like this one a whole lot more. In terms of coverage, this is a light to medium coverage. They do have 12 shades, which is a decent selection for the drugstore, and I think they have a good range within the shades. The other nice thing about this one is it does apply very smoothly, it blends easily, and it feels comfortable on the skin. But the big thing that for me I didn't like about this foundation is that it has a ton of shimmer in it. Um, and you might not notice it in artificial lighting or if you're doing your makeup at a regular distance from the mirror, but the second that you're in natural daylight or you get about two feet away from your face, um, you can see the shimmer on your skin. And it's not just a little bit here or there because it's mixed into the foundation, it's wherever you apply the foundation. The other thing I didn't really like about this one was that uh, as it wears over the day, it does start to fade in certain areas wherever you tend to have a little bit more oil. I find that it fades and also gets a little bit patchy, so it makes it even more obvious that you're wearing foundation. The next foundation on my list of less favorite is the NYX HD Studio Photogenic Foundation. Now, I feel like this one is also a reformulation, repackaging, because I actually did a review on the older HD foundation, I think two years back, and it is on my channel. They got rid of that one and they came out with this one, and I do notice some differences right off the bat. The first thing is the packaging. The other one was in a like tan bottle with a pump, and this one is obviously a black squeeze tube, which I actually like better. I think that this is great for travel. It's really easy to throw it into your bag, and you do get a nice amount of control when you're squeezing it out. I picked up mine in the shade Soft Beige 102. Now the first thing I'll say that I don't like about the NYX foundation is they have a really poor shade selection. I believe they only came out with five shades. They're all for basically light to medium skin tones. They are lacking in the fair department and they're obviously lacking in tan to deeper skin tones. In terms of the coverage, I feel like this one gives you a light to medium coverage at best. Medium when I apply a good amount of this more than I would with a typical foundation and I use a stippling or buffer brush. If you're going to use a beauty blender or any sort of sponge, it definitely is going to shear out any of these foundations, but with this one, it's going to give you close to no coverage. It did dry to more of a satin, almost border dewy finish. I found that of all of the more luminous foundations, this one made me look the most shiny in the least amount of time. So around the three to four hour mark, I had to definitely blot off the oil and touch up with some powder. and. I felt like I saw a lot of oil on my blotting paper more than normal. So that was something I didn't like. The other thing with this one is I found it did start to break down and fade around the three to four hour mark in the areas that I was more oily. I think this might work better for people with dry skin that also fall into the skin color range that they have released. 
um, but in terms of normal combination and definitely oily skin, I don't think this foundation has the best wear for you. Also, another big con I forgot to mention is the price point on this one. This is the most expensive of all of the foundations at the drugstore that I tested this year. It retails for $18. They're all one fluid ounce. This one is 1.12 fluid ounces, so slightly more, but still $18 is, in my opinion, way overpriced for this foundation. The next foundation I wanna talk about is not a terrible foundation. It's just not my favorite for a couple of factors that may be a personal preference. Um, this is the new CoverGirl Outlast Stay Luminous Foundation. This one retails for $12.99 and they have seven shades right now, which again, I don't think it's the best range at the drugstore, especially for CoverGirl, because they tend to have pretty decent shade selections with some of their other foundations, and I think it caters more to the fair to medium skin tones. Now, in terms of coverage, this one I feel gives a light to medium coverage. Definitely can get a medium coverage with a brush. It does blend really nicely and it has really nice packaging. It comes with a pump that I feel like gives really good control. You're not going to waste a lot of product with this and it keeps the product from getting contaminated. In terms of the wear, I found that this one does wear pretty well. I didn't find much fading or patchiness with this throughout the day but I do find that I get shiny with this one at about the four hour mark and need to either blot off or touch up with some powder. Other than the shine though, I think it holds up well. In terms of what I didn't like about this foundation, the first thing would be that there is some fine shimmer to this one as well. It's not as obvious as the Revlon airbrush, but you can still notice some of the shimmer up close and in natural daylight. Two biggest things that I don't like about this foundation would be the odor it has a really funky odor that I can't quite describe and it's an odor that for me lingered all day like I could still notice it on my skin four hours later so if you're sensitive to fragrances or odors then you might want to stay away from this one the other thing I didn't like about this one was that it kind of felt heavy on the skin it goes on and blends easily but it remains tacky it never sets and even with powder, you still feel that sort of um, tackiness to your skin throughout the day. The next foundation on my list is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. This is one that I was really excited to try. I just tend to gravitate towards matte finish foundations. I never liked the original Fit Me with the more dewy finish and this one is targeted towards normal to oily skin so i was hoping it would be a good fit and i have to say i don't dislike this foundation it's just not one of my top favorites so it's sitting kind of in the middle of the list and i believe this one comes in 16 different shades i think this one might be the best in terms of shade selection of all of these new drugstore foundations and i think the range is really nice they go from fair all the way to deeper skin tones pretty well for a drugstore foundation this one gives medium coverage and sets to a soft matte finish. It almost looks like you've applied powder to your skin when it first sets, and that can be really appealing for some. I actually really like the finish of this one, and I like the finish of this one even more as it wears for a couple hours because then it kind of mixes with your own body temperature and oils and looks a little bit more natural. In terms of its consistency, it is a more liquidy foundation, and it doesn't have a pump, so that's kind of a con for me because it kind of makes a mess coming out and it's a little harder to control how much product you're dispensing. Um, but it does blend really easily into the skin and it does set pretty quickly. In terms of its wear, I found that even though it is more of a matte foundation, I was still getting shiny with this one at about the four to five hour mark. And so I did need to go in and blot off and top with a little bit of powder, which was a little bit surprising just because typically with a matte foundation, especially one that has more of a powdery finish, I would expect it to have a little bit better wear. The other thing I noticed with this one is it does cling to any uneven texture on your skin. So if you have any sort of dry patches, maybe some acne marks that are a little bit raised or uneven, it will adhere to those and accentuate them. The last thing I noticed with this one is it did start to fade in terms of coverage around the six to seven hour mark for me. And I found that it faded in the areas where I either had uneven texture or a little bit more oiliness. So the next foundation on my list is another Maybelline foundation and it is the Superstay Better Skin Foundation. 
I actually like this one even a little more than the um, Matte and Poreless Foundation, but this one gives you more of a satin finish. It does go on really smooth and blends really easily. I find that it gives you a solid medium coverage. It can definitely be sheared out with a beauty blender for a lighter coverage but I couldn't build it a whole lot more than a medium coverage. It currently comes in eight shades and retails for $11.99. And the shade selection is okay for drugstore. It's not great. Um, again, they fall a little short in the tanner to deeper skin tones. In terms of its wear, it does wear pretty well. I find that I get shiny with this one at about the four to five hour mark, which I was expecting because it is more of a satin finish. So I usually have more of an issue with how well it controls oil. And um, surprisingly, this one wasn't too bad, but I did have to blot off and touch up with a little bit of powder around the four to five hour mark. And then I felt like I could wear it for another three to four hours without any issues. I did notice a little bit of fading or breaking down of the coverage by around the seven hour mark. Ultimately, this foundation is gonna be the best for a dry, normal combination skin. I think especially if you have dry to normal skin. This is a nice one to check out. While I'm on the topic of drier skin types, this next foundation is going to work beautifully for those with dry skin. It's one of my favorites in terms of a more luminous or satin finish. This is the Physician's Formula Touch of Glow Foundation. And right now I'm gonna tell you that the worst thing about this one is the shade selection. It only comes in two shades. This shade that I have here is supposed to be light and then I believe they have a light to medium. I do really love the finish of this foundation and that says a lot because I don't typically tend to gravitate towards the more dewy or satin foundations. This one is a really liquidy foundation um, that does come with a pump and it does give you quite a bit of control. Right off the bat you can tell that it's really liquidy and it has this very beautiful opalescent sheen to it. It's not so much pieces of glitter or large pieces of shimmer as much as a really, really fine sheen or shimmer to it that just looks like a glow to your skin. Um, so I think the name on this one really captures it well and it does have really pretty packaging. Uh, it sets to a really beautiful satin skin-like texture. It definitely needs some oil controlling by the four hour mark. It's one of those foundations that I pretty much expected to have to touch up or blot off the oil around that time frame. But I do find that the coverage of it, the actual foundation itself stays on the skin for a solid eight, nine hours without breaking down or fading on me. It applies really easily, blends beautifully. I don't find that it clings to any uneven texture or patches and it's gonna give you more of a light to medium coverage. That's my number one recommendation for dry skin. So I have two more foundations that I wanna talk about and these are my two favorite releases this year from the drugstore and the first one I'm gonna talk about is the Rimmel Lasting Finish 25 Hour Foundation. This is another one that was a repackaging, reformulation of an older version. The older version came in a um, squeeze tube, which I actually loved and preferred over this packaging. Um, in terms of the actual formulation, I don't notice major differences in terms of the coverage or wear of the foundation. This one feels like it has a little bit more slip to it. Um, but other than that, I think that it's still a really beautiful foundation. One of my personal favorites from the drugstore in terms of looking for a long lasting soft matte finish foundation. It comes in seven shades, which I think is one of the biggest negatives about this one. The shade selection is not great. It's definitely targeted more towards fair to medium skin tones. In terms of coverage, this is definitely gonna give you a medium to fuller coverage, which is really nice if that's what you're looking for. One thing I noticed with this one when applying it is that it does have a light fragrance to it. Um, it's almost like a floral fragrance that I would say lingers for a little bit, but eventually I didn't notice it. It wears beautifully. I think it's one of the longer wearing foundations at the drugstore. I can get a solid nine, 10 hours of wear from this foundation without any loss in coverage or fading. I would say that probably the biggest con with this one for me now is the packaging. It is a relatively thick foundation, so I feel like you have to kind of work with this bottle sometimes and really shake the product out to get it. 
um, which is kind of a pain in the butt, especially when you're in a hurry. I also don't like when they are without a pump because you can't control the product as much. I feel like I tend to waste more that way and it's more likely to be contaminated this way. We're down to my last foundation for this video and this one is my favorite from the new launches and it's actually one of my favorite foundations right now to wear for day to day. Uh, it's from L'Oreal and it's their Infallible Pro Matte Foundation and it claims to give you 24 hours of wear, demi matte finish, air light, oil free. This one comes in 10 shades and retails for about $12.99. I love the packaging. This is the kind of packaging that I would prefer for a lot of my foundations to come in because not only do you get nice control with dispensing the product while still protecting it from getting contaminated, but these ones are so travel friendly, even more than the glass bottles with the pump because they're not as heavy and they are less bulky so you can just throw them into your bag for travel or if you're going to need to touch up later in the day you can stick it in your purse and it's not going to eat up a lot of room. In terms of coverage I would say this gives you a solid medium coverage. It dries to a really beautiful soft matte finish so I definitely agree with the claim of demi matte. It doesn't look flat, it doesn't look too powdery. I think one of the strongest points about this one is its wear. I could get a solid 10 hours out of this one, no problem. I didn't have any fading or patchiness throughout the day. And um, I would say that I would need to blot off some oil and touch up with powder probably around the six to seven hour mark, which is really good for a foundation in my opinion, especially in this humidity and heat. I do find that it applies really smoothly. It blends easily. It's a little bit of a thicker formula, but it's not too thick either. And I think it applies equally beautifully and easily with both a sponge and a brush. So that is going to wrap up today's video on best and worst new drugstore foundations for 2015. I hope that you found this helpful. I hope I was able to answer a lot of your questions, but if you have any other questions that I might have missed or even recommendations for future videos, please feel free to let me know in the comments section or on any of my social media, which I'll have linked below. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all of your support. I will talk to you all very soon. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.